In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with the topic of how remembering Allah on a regular basis, how it becomes a great means of dealing with the ups and downs of life. And we spoke yesterday about simple words that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to say on a regular basis that will open up our connection with Allah, keep us connected to Him, and we will find Him there for us in life. And today what I want to do is speak about things to not do when you are remembering Allah. Because a lot of people, you know, cancel out the rewards or cancel out the benefits of remembering Allah because they add to it something that they should not have added. And this is what we're going to speak about today, okay? First of all, one of the things that you should never, ever, ever, ever do when you remember Allah is to ask for death. How many of you know people who do this? Oh, I'm in such pain. Oh, Allah, just kill me. I'd rather die, Allah. Oh, Allah, give me death rather than have me suffer with this. Asking for death is something that we should not do. We have to understand, guys, life was meant to be a trial for us. We were created to worship Allah. We were put here to prove to him that we believe in him every day. So we're going to be faced with ups and downs. But no matter how difficult it gets, we should never ask Allah to end it. Because remember, there's always a chance as long as you're living. This is what we talked about today on the quiz. That one question I asked you, why did the prophet say that Alhamdulillah is the best prayer a person can make? Because when you say Alhamdulillah, not only are you praising Allah, but you're also thanking him. Thanking him for the good that you have, no matter how small it may seem to be. The simple fact that your heart is still beating, the simple fact that you are still conscious and aware of what's going on, that means that there is still hope. You still have hope for Allah's forgiveness, hope for Allah's mercy, hope for his help. Just like the story of Prophet Job. A Job lost his wife, his children, his money, his property, everything, even his health. But he still said, Alhamdulillah, he still praised the law and thanked the law for keeping him alive. So again, I don't care what you're experiencing in life, no matter how difficult it gets, you should never wish for death. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, none of you should make a request for death because of the trouble in which you are enduring. But if there seems to be no other help, then just simply say, Oh Allah, keep me alive as long as living is good for me. And oh Allah, bring death to me only when there is goodness and death for me. So that's what you should say. If you're enduring something that's so dramatic for you, never ask Allah to end it. You, you can simply say, oh Allah, keep me living as long as living is best for me. And oh Allah, Take my soul only if death is best for me. That's all. But never, ever, ever ask for a law to just end it. And nowadays, you know, this is one of the signs of the last hour. So many people can't handle the trials of life. They take their own life. And this is sad. And again, even when you're experiencing a sickness, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said no one should ever ask for death. One of the companions tells us that when, when, when his uh, father was alive, his father told him, if the Prophet did not say that, I would have asked for death because I was in such pain from my sickness. So even if you're enduring a, a trying sickness, never ask for death. We have another hadith where another companion tells us that he visited one of his friends who had, who had uh, seven cauteries in his stomach. And he said, I am in so much pain. The pain is so bad that if I did not fear Allah, 
I would ask for death, but I can never ask for death because the prophet forbade it. Okay, again, none of you should make a request for death and do not call for it before it comes for you. Because when any of you dies, all your good deeds will cease too. And the life of the believer is not prolonged, but for goodness. SubhanAllah. So again, guys, I want you to keep that in mind. You know, I don't care what you're going through in life, what trial, what difficulty. Never ask Allah to end it for you. Okay? Also, another thing you should never do. You should never ask to be punished because of your bad choices. How many of you do this? I receive emails all the time from many of people who say that they listen to me. A lot of people listen to me on YouTube, but they don't come to my classes. I strongly encourage you guys to come into my classes to experience me live. So that way I can answer your questions and better explain things to you. I get emails all the time from listeners who tell me, they say, oh, Sister Layla, you know, I've done so much bad. I ask a lot to forgive me, and I always ask him to go ahead and punish me now. Punish me for it. Well, we have a hadith, whereas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to visit a person from among the Muslims to ask about his health because this person was sick. And the Prophet asked him, he said, did you supplicate for something or beg something from a law which is why you're not getting better the man said well the only thing i can think of is i used to say oh a law impose punishment upon me now in this world what you will give to me in the hereafter and when he said this the prophet said subhanallah you have neither the power nor the patience to, to endure the punishment of this, of, of this world. So why don't you instead say, Oh Allah, give us good in this world and good in the hereafter and save us from the hellfire. As soon as the, that, the prophet made that supplication for that man, that man became healed. How many of you know people who do that? I know a lot of Muslims who email me and tell me, Sister Layla, I always ask Allah to punish me now, to give me my punishment in this world now. This is wrong. Like the prophet said, you wouldn't be able to endure it. Instead, don't ever ask Allah to punish you for your bad deeds. Never ask Allah to punish you for your bad choices. Instead, ask Allah to forgive you of your bad deeds to forgive you of your bad choices. And then ask Allah to give you the good in this world and to give you the good in the hereafter and save you from hell. SubhanAllah. Stop doing that, guys. Remember, Allah forgives all sins, no matter how big they are, no matter how bad. He forgives fornication. He forgives adultery. He forgives murder even. So don't ask Allah to punish you because of your sins or your choices. Instead, stop committing the sin and ask Allah to forgive you of it. And ask Allah to bless you with the good of this world and the hereafter. SubhanAllah. Stop cursing yourself. So many of us curse ourselves. When you ask Allah to punish you, you're cursing yourself. Stop cursing yourself. Remember, in order to be a true believer, not only must you have fear of Allah, but you have to have hope of his mercy. And Muslims today, we need to work on developing hope. I don't care what you did. So what? You're human. You were born to make mistakes. You were born to make bad choices from time to time. The simple fact that you recognize it's a mistake, you recognize it's a bad choice, feel good about that and stop it and say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, have mercy on me. Oh Allah, give me the strength to resist my desires, to resist the urges of my personal gen. And oh Allah, 
bless me instead with the best of this world and the best of the hereafter. Stop cursing yourselves, people, and instead make do up for yourself. This is the problem. We're so used to asking other people to make do up for us. You need to learn how to make do up for yourself. Okay? Also, a person should not spend the whole day remembering a law. Remember, this is what the Sufis do. How many of you know people who spend all day long, they think that all they're supposed to do is wake up and spend the whole day praying. These people sit on the floor bobbing up and down all day. A la, 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 a la, 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 la. Or they spend the whole day reading Quran to the point where they, they're tired, exhausted. Remember, Allah hates fanaticism. He hates a fanatic just as much as he hates a person who is negligent. Remember, Islam is all about moderation. You don't want to spend all your time remembering Allah. Remember, you're not an angel. We're human beings. The angels were created to remember Allah all the time. We're humans. There's a time for this and a time for that. The prophet said there's a time for laughter. There's a time to cry. There's a time to play, a time to be serious, a time to pray, a time to spend with your family, to have fun. So again, you know, do not do that. We have a hadith where as one of the prophet's wives tells us that one day the prophet left her apartment and she was uh, uh, praying. And when he came back in the afternoon, she was still sitting in the same spot praying. The prophet said, you've been in this same spot since I left you. He, she, and he said, I recited four words three times after I left you. And if these were to be weighed against what you have been saying since Fajr, those were four words I, I stated would outweigh them. And those words are simply what we talked about today. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. He said, hallowed be Allah and praise is due to him to the extent of the number of his creation, to the extent of his pleasure, and to the extent of the weight of his throne. He said, I got more rewards, more rewards saying that phrase, those words of remembrance than you got for sitting in that spot all day praying. Again, Allah does not like fanaticism. You do not want to spend the whole day remembering Allah. You are a human being. There's a time for this, a time for that. You remember a lot and take a break. Go eat, go watch TV, go spend time with your wife, your children, your family. Go visit your neighbors, visit your family, go shopping. Then later on in the day, if you want to remember a lot some more, you can. Okay, but a lot does not like fanaticism, so we should never do that. And this is a problem with the Sufis. They spend too much time remembering a lot and not enough time in enjoying the good things in life. We also have another hadith. And by the way, this next hadith answers the question that many Muslims uh, ask about whether or not it's lawful for us to use zikr beads or prayer beads. Well, let me first go over this hadith and we'll talk about that. We have a hadith whereas once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw a woman who had some date stones that she was using as beads to help glorify Allah. And the Prophet said to her, let me tell you something which would be easier for you to do than that. And he told her to say, Supana Allah. I mean, I'm going to go over it in English for you. Let me skip down to the English part. He told her to say, glory be to Allah as many times as the number of what he has created in heaven. Glory be to Allah as many times as the number of what he has created on earth. Glory be to Allah as many times as the number of which he has created between them. And glory be to Allah as many times as the number of that which he is creating. Allah is the most great. A similar amount number of times. Praise be to Allah a similar number of times. And there is no God but Allah. And there is no might and power except in him. He said to simply say those words is easier than you sitting there 
trying to keep count using rocks. And this is a woman who couldn't count. Okay, she, a lot of people are illiterate. She didn't know how to count, so she had went and gathered all these date stones, hoping that they were a hundred. I think she was trying to do it a hundred times, but she didn't know if it was a hundred or not. So the prophet said, don't, let me teach you something which is easier. Just simply say, glory be to Allah as many times as the number of what he has created and the, as many times as, as what he's created in heaven and on earth. To simply say this, this is easier than you sitting there trying to keep track using those rocks. Okay? And so that brings us to the question. Is using beads to count instead of your fingers, is this an innovation in Islam? Or is this haram in Islam? Well, again, as illustrated in the hadith I just shared with you, there were some people out there, some companions who could not read. There were some companions who could not count. So they tried to keep count using rocks or pebbles. For those people who cannot count, there is nothing wrong with them using the pebbles. The prophet didn't tell her that it's haram to use the, the rocks. He just told her, I'm going to teach you something that's easier than you trying to keep count. So using a beads to count with, you know, if you are a person who is illiterate, you don't know how to count, then there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are a person who Allah has blessed with knowledge, you do know how, how to count, then you should do as the Prophet did. Remember, you know, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us how to remember Allah. Remembering Allah is an act of worship. All acts of worship should be done the way the Prophet taught us. The Prophet taught us to count using your fingers. But again, that's if you are a person who knows how to count. If you cannot count, then there's nothing wrong with you using the prayer beads. Everybody understand? And that is not imitating uh, the Kafir. As you can see, the simple fact that there were our Muslims and there were Muslims even in the time of the prophet who used beads and who used rocks, that shows that Using beads or rocks is not limited to non-Muslims. When we say that something is imitating the Kafir, that means that we're doing something that is exclusive to them. The non-Muslims did not have and do not have exclusive, exclusivity on counting with rocks. So any, any person out there telling you that it's imitating Kafir or it's innovation, these are people who don't understand their religion. Okay, so if you are a person that cannot count, there's nothing wrong with you using prayer beads or rocks. But if you know how to count, do it the way the prophet said. And we have a hadith here, whereas the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded the immigrant women to be regular in remembering Allah by saying Allah is the greatest, glory be to him, and there is no God to him. And to never be forgetful of Allah and his mercy and to count them on their fingers because the fingers will be questioned and will speak. So that's the hadith that is the proof that if you know how to count, you should use your fingers. Okay? You can use your fingers. Also, we have another hadith where one of the companions says, I saw the prophet counting and glorifying Allah using the right hand's fingers. So if you know how to count and you want to keep count, use your fingers. But if you don't know how to count, there's nothing wrong with using prayer beads. Everybody understand that? So I hope that answers the question. I've given you the dalio. Also, guys, something else that you need to remember whenever two or more muslims come together they should remember allah in some way and that can be done by either enjoining the good or forbidding the evil with one another or even reminding each other or it can be simply done by mentioning allah's name 
When you see another Muslim and you give them salams, that's an action of remembrance of Allah because you're mentioning Allah's name, okay? And if I come to you and we talk and I say, oh, I just want to remind you, sister, don't forget, you know, the e prayers coming up, okay? That's an act of remembrance too. You know, or mashallah, you look so beautiful. It's so nice to see us that uh, there are still sisters out here who wear hijab like they're supposed to. That's an action of remembrance too. Any form of remembrance. But whenever two or more Muslims come together, we should remember Allah in some way, either by enjoining good, by greeting each other, or something. We have a hadith where it's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if people sit together in, in a gathering and they do not remember Allah, and they do not send blessings upon me, it will be a cause of grief for them on the day of judgment. So whenever we meet with another Muslim, the first thing you should do is give the greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Okay? That's an action of remembrance. Okay? So again, guys, uh, and also we talked about during Ramadan, uh, uh, whenever we meet in a, a gathering, we should also send blessings upon the Prophet. That's why when uh, you go to these lectures, you listen to a speaker or a lecture, we always uh, uh, send blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, and mention Allah's name, you know, in that um, uh, lecture. And finally, guys, another thing that we should never do, and we talked about this a couple of days ago, and I told you I'd give you the hadith. We should never sit in a gathering in which there are unlawful things happening. In other words, say for example, I go to a conference and I'm listening to a lecturer speak about Islam and the things he's saying is not true or not correct. I'm going to get up and walk out and it happened to me not too long ago. I went to a conference and there was some man who I didn't even know talking about Islam and I don't know what, where he came from or who he was, but he was so wrong misconstruing the meaning of hadith, I got up and walked out of there. Okay? Or if you're in a gathering and people are backbiting, or they're doing sinful things, they're planning to rob a bank or something. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if anyone sits in a gathering where there is much clamor and says before getting up to leave, glory be to Allah, I begin with declaring all praises to you, and I testify there is no God but you, and I ask your forgiveness. He will be forgiven of any sin that might have happened. That's why when you go to these lectures, people start off with, alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam, Allah, wa rasulullah. When we do that, you know, that protects us from anything that we might say wrong. But if you are a listener, and you go to a gathering like I went to not too long ago, and here is a person speaking about the religion, and he's telling things that's not correct. He's misinterpreting the meaning of hadith. I cannot sit there and be a part of that. I get, you get up and walk out. Or you go to a, a gathering of Muslims, two sisters are sitting together, and you join their table, and they're backbiting other Muslims. You get up and leave. Okay? Remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the atonement for backbiting and slander is to pray for forgiveness of the person who was slandered and to say, oh Allah, forgive us and him. So in other words, if I'm sitting at a, a table and other Muslims are talking about another Muslim, I'm going to sit there, I'm going to, before I remove myself, I'm going to say, oh Allah, forgive us and forgive him, and I'm going to get up and leave out. I am not going to be a part of that. You have to mention the person and defend them, even if it's somebody you don't know. So I'm going to say, oh Allah, forgive us and forgive him, then I'm going to get up and walk out of that, you know, away from that table. Okay? So, again, guys, these are things that you cannot do. You know, you don't want to be a part of a gathering in which haram is going on. Also, remember, you never, ever, ever make dua asking Allah to kill you or end your life. Also, you never make dua asking Allah to punish you now in this world for whatever sins you, uh, you've committed or choices you made. 
And again, there's nothing wrong with using prayer beads if you are a person that does not know how to count. If you do know how to count, then you should follow the sunnah of our prophet and use your fingers. So we'll stop right here for today. I want you guys to not only memorize those hadiths, but understand the meaning as I have presented them to you so that when we have the quiz tomorrow, you'll be able to give me more detailed explanation. So we'll stop right here today. Tomorrow, what we're going to do is speak about common supplications that our prophet taught us to say in specific situations. It'll be a very beneficial lecture, a very beneficial class. So please make sure you guys are here for it, okay? So we'll stop right here for today. If you guys have any 